guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Lady Left a Bruise. I was out to eat at a cafe in a rather nice botanical garden with my parents, my brother, and his fiancée for my brother's birthday. This restaurant slash cafe has kind of a confusing setup, where they seat you and give you a menu, but then you go up to this counter type thing, tell them what you want off the menu, pay and then take your food back to your seat. You also self bus, and they have bins to put dishes in and a cart to put the menus back on. After my family got all of our food and stuff settled, I grabbed all of our menus to take them and put them on the cart. As I was walking through tables, an older lady stops me and politely asks me if I could take their table's menus and holds out a stack to me. I tell her, I don't work here, but I don't mind taking your menus. I now have a hefty stack of menus, Ten, I think. I wasn't quite struggling, but I wouldn't have been able to hold any more even if I wanted to. Their menus are stylized and each is on its own clipboard. I begin walking toward the menu cart again, and the next table, I pass this grumpy old woman snaps her fingers at me. I stop, mostly because I'm taken by surprise and mildly insulted that anyone thinks it's okay to snap their fingers at anyone, even if I was wait staff. As soon as I stop, she grabs a stack of menus from her table and shoves them at me with very surprising force for a woman of her age and size. They hit my arm very hard, causing the other menus to cascade out of my hands. Everyone in earshot, which is pretty much everyone since it's a small cafe, turns to look at me. I start to blush and hurriedly start picking up the menus that I dropped. And meanwhile, this lady is just loudly clearing her throat and still brandishing her menus at me. I'm very shy and hate the feeling of having eyes on me, so my brain is in panic mode and I don't really know what to do. Luckily, at that moment my dad, who saw everything, comes over to intervene. I just finished picking up the menus and straighten up to see my dad fuming standing next to me. Now, my dad is 6'3 and about 250 pounds. He's 60 and generally a gentle giant, but he can still look extremely threatening when he's pissed. He politely asks the lady if there's a problem. Obviously mistaking him for some sort of manager, she says, no, everything is fine, you just have some very clumsy weight staff. She gives me a smug look and once again thrusts her stack of menus at me. My dad changes his tone of voice to be much quieter and slightly more threatening. That's not a waiter. That's my daughter that you just physically assaulted. I don't think I've ever seen someone change their demeanor so quickly in my life. Her smug smile melts and she starts blustering out an apology, but my dad just turns to me and says, let's go sit down and finish the rest of our delightful lunch, very far away from this old crow. I dump our menus into the cart, and on my way back through the tables, I overheard the old idiot getting tons of flack from her friends. Why do you always have to be so rude? You embarrass us everywhere we go etc. One of them reaches out to apologize as I pass. I nod and just keep walking. I will never understand why people think it's okay to touch strangers without their consent, ever. I have a small bruise on my arm from the incident. The next story is titled I don't work for your competitor. I'm just planning my wedding. Many years ago, back when cell phone cameras were still a new concept, I was getting married. Without a lot of money for a wedding, I was planning the ceremony myself and drove to all the craft stores in my area to find affordable inspiration. I had a system for keeping the ideas organized so I could come back to the right stores and find the items later. This involved taking a picture of the item right above the price tag and then jotting down in a notebook what I could use it for. I would also write the code for the photo above the note so I wouldn't get mixed up. After discovering how pricey craft stores are, I decided to try my luck at Walmart. They have craft supplies, right? So there I was, minding my own business, snapping a picture and writing in my notebook, when an employee walked up to me and said, ma'am, are you doing price comparisons right now? I nodded and said yes and started to explain my system, thinking this was just a friendly person I was going to have a chat with. The employee held up her hand. I don't need to know all that. You can't take pictures of the prices. You have to write them down, but if you keep taking pictures, I will kick you out of the store. My mouth dropped open. That escalated quickly. There had to be a mistake. I asked, but how will I remember what the item looked like? She shook her head. Not my problem if you have a bad memory. 
put the camera away, and she turned on her heel to march off. So I had a dilemma. I couldn't plan a wedding with no pictures, but I couldn't take pictures of the prices. Okay, I would just take a picture of the item without the price and include the price in my notes. I wrote everything down first, just in case she threw me out before I got all the info, and then snapped the picture. Sure enough, she rounded the corner of the shelf where she had been hiding and said, I said no pictures. I stood still and replied, I didn't take a picture of the price, ma'am. You can see it if you want. I don't care. You're leaving now. Just then, another employee walked up. I don't know who she was, but the other employee immediately went meek. Nice employee. What's the trouble here? Angry employee. She's using a camera phone to do price comparisons. I spoke up and said, I stopped taking pictures of the price like she asked, but I'm planning my own wedding to save money, and I need pictures to know which things go well together. Nice employee, so you don't work for another store. These are for your own personal use. I nodded and said yes, I can't afford a big wedding, so I'm doing everything myself. I just need ideas and places to get things for cheap. I briefly showed her my notebook and a couple of the pictures I had taken. The nice employee nodded like she was impressed and said that's a great idea. I should have done that too. Weddings are too expensive. She then turned to the other lady and said, she's fine, come on, I could use you over here. I said thank you and the nice employee said, not at all. Congratulations, and led the other woman away sulking and silent. I was able to put together the entire wedding for under dollar one thousand. The next story is titled My neighbor decided to tear down the fence and ended up losing some of her yard space. This was several years ago. My dad has lived in the house I grew up in and we have had the same neighbor the entire time. One day I'm home and I can hear a lot of noise coming from the backyard. Apparently she had decided that it was time to redo the fence. Just for context, the fence was falling apart and it needed to go. I called my dad and told him that she had apparently torn down the fence and decided that it was time. He wasn't happy, however he also didn't mind, because the holes in the fence allowed her five dogs to frequently come into our yard and poop all over his garden and they dug up a few of his plants on occasion. After the fence was down, she put down a string for where she thought the property line was. When my dad came home, he didn't like it and put down one of his own. The two lines of string were approximately one foot apart. After discussing it with her, my dad was always civil about everything, usually not showing when he was upset at something. They decided to call in someone from the city to market for them. She ended up losing part of her yard because when the properties were built, the builders did not put the fence on the property line correctly. The next story is titled, You Don't Work Here Lady. Woman tries to use our store as her own Etsy shop. I worked in a large department store back before there was Etsy or any similar service for artists to open up independent shops. I worked in the back office administration piece, not out on the floor. One day, one of the checkout girls called me over and said they were trying to scan a lady out, but one of her items didn't have a barcode. I figured maybe it had been stuck on somewhere strange, but checked it out and I didn't see anything. In fact, I didn't even recognize the item when I looked to see where I could find a second one to scan and I knew the store pretty well. It was an absurdly hideous piece of almost homemade-looking costume jewelry, not like anything we offered. I thought maybe we had a new supplier I was unaware of so looked at the tag, and lo and behold, it was a hand-drawn price tag. So, definitely not ours. There were a lot of shops in the area, so I figured someone bought it nearby and it slipped out of their bag or they set it down by accident, and this customer assumed we were selling it because of the price tag. I figured whoever left it would be back to look for it soon. It was way overpriced, $1.80 for the one necklace. So brought it to customer service and returned to business as usual of counting the minutes to close and regretting my life choices. But as the day marched on, a few more people appeared with similar stuff. Some more jewelry mostly. One with a sweater? That was actually a sweater we did sell. But with huge garish rhinestones added on that were definitely not a SKU we offered. People kept coming to check out with lots of things we actually sold like makeup mirrors, handbags and shoes, but all with unnecessary rhinestones, sequins and beads glued on that definitely didn't come from us or the original manufacturer. So finally, the manager just had staff do a sweep of the store and collect anything with rhinestones on it or anything with a handmade price tag and put them in the lost and found. Though we did wonder how someone's personal belongings would become scattered all throughout the store and didn't think they could have really been accidentally lost. 
Our working theory was that someone got in a fight with their shopping companion and did it out of spite, like maybe a couple broke up or a sibling rivalry or something, but we'd resign ourselves to the fact that we'd never know. Our lost and found was a single basket about the size of a TSA security bin at the airport, and there was so much of this stuff that it overflowed past the top, so after a couple days, we dumped it all in the trash. A few days after that, a middle-aged woman comes in decked out head to toe in sequins and glitter and rhinestones, with neon makeup like a sixth grader would wear to their first school dance, and asked to speak to the person in charge, identifying herself as one of your partners. I knew we were about to get some answers to the other day's mystery. I stopped all my work. I was ready to hear how and why she ended up leaving half her wardrobe scattered around, and why anyone would voluntarily dress like that after 40. So I listened to her going at it with customer service and it became clear she had bought things here maybe. Unclear if she'd even paid for them or not, or if she'd just used things from here without paying for them. She then bedazzled theme either by purchasing themer covertly bedazzling in the store without buying the items. We never did find out which. She then put them back on the shelves and now expected to collect a check after they were purchased at an upsell price that she'd added on with her handmade price tag. Apparently, she had done this in a few stores and was going around with business cards claiming her designs. Bedazzled versions of department store products were sold in big department stores like Karen's Fab Designs, as seen on the shelves of Macy's, Nordstrom's, JCPenney and more. The manager explained this was not a consignment store and she couldn't just leave altered products here for people to buy and expect to split the money with us. She was sure we must just not understand that she had improved the items with rhinestones thereby making them more valuable, and was shocked when the realization set in that we understood what she was saying but still didn't want her doing it. She was irate, offended, threatened to break off the partnership that we did not want and did not know we had, and eventually demanded the stuff back. The most senior manager on the floor had come over by this point, not because she'd asked to speak to the person in charge, but because she was causing a scene and none of us were sure what to do about being on her business card. Plus, everyone, regardless of seniority, was equally curious about the rhinestones mystery. And he explained we'd gotten rid of the stuff because she didn't bother to explain this arrangement to any of us, and we aren't a pawn shop where you can hawk personal goods. A major argument ensued. She gave us two choices, go through the dumpster and salvage the things you threw out or refund me the adjusted read upcharged cost of the items you threw out. The manager then gave her two choices leave or be escorted out by security. The manager did worry that there could be repercussions for throwing out all her stuff since technically corporate policy was that we were supposed to hang on to lost and found items for seven business days. So he offered her some coupons to end things on a good note. She didn't take them and screamed at us that we needed to replace everything and pay for new material to rebezzle them. At that point, the manager more flatly insisted she leave. She didn't. Security had to escort her out. To our total shock, she kept telling security she worked here, and really confused them, because they'd never seen her, so weren't sure if it was because she was crazy or if it was because she was from corporate IE, someone who could fire them. We had to explain to security and her, that in fact, she did not work here and this partnership was non-existent. Again explaining that she couldn't sell her own products here in our department store. She kept saying, we can negotiate you a higher cut, that was just my starting offer. So after a bit the manager just gave up on explaining and stopped engaging with her. She tried to come in every day for a week after that, to the point that we had a security guard stand right near the door to redirect her before she could even step over the threshold. She got in one more time through the fire door, with which she set an alarm off, and we had to evacuate the store. So we let her know loud and clear that next time the police would handle it. I guess some other stores had already made good on that promise, so she stopped coming but she kept doing this elsewhere around town for several weeks until she was blacklisted by every store from the highest end boutiques to the dollar store. I don't know if she didn't understand how stores worked or just didn't care, but she really created a lot of extra work for us. I will say this, many people were coming to the register to purchase her items, and that department chain is bankrupt now so, she probably has a lucrative Etsy type store and the last laugh. The next story is titled I'm Not His Nurse happened at a wedding for a very close friend. Friend has cerebral palsy and for a while I worked as his aide. Basically got paid to hang out the way we would anyway. So he gets married out of state and I fly out to be his best lady, best man, but I'm obviously female. I wore a pretty dress, gave a toast and everything. 
We were surprised that I was not in one wedding picture, X from other wedding party things from the venue. Couldn't figure out why I kept getting shooed by the photographer, etc. until one of the family members made a comment later in the night. Your friends? Nurse right? That's great you flew out here for work. Joined by other nods from family. Everyone thought I was his assistive staff, despite being in the program, giving a toast, etc., and all assumed the title was to hide the fact that he needed help. I want to say when we think of that we laugh, but it's more of a long sigh and reflecting on how much people suck. The next story is titled Lady Trying to Get Me Fired for Not Being an Employee. So for some backstory here, I'm trilingual, English, Spanish, Chinese, and at the time I was working at a local store with similar outfit, basic red polo and gray khakis. On my way back from work I stopped by AutoZone to get some oil, spark plugs, and basic car maintenance stuff. While in there I was looking at the spark plugs when some Asian lady probably mid-50s asked, do you guys carry this thing that you put on top of the gasket for Hondas? I didn't answer at first, cause I had one earbud in and thought she was talking to the dude at the counter. She taps me on the shoulder and say excuse me so, I tell her oh sorry do you need to get through? She responds I'd asked you a question. I tried as calmly as I could to tell her I don't work here ma'am. She goes on to complain that I have the red polo and I tell her go bother the person at the counter with your thing question. She walks away talking to herself in Chinese saying that's one way to lose your job you slut congratulations on being the next mirror in the unemployment line. She starts to complain to the guy at the counter and he tells her I don't work there. She replies with yeah, well she shouldn't anymore thank you. I walk up to the register behind her and say to her in near perfect Chinese, excuse me, but I need to purchase these items with the money I made at work before coming here. Her face goes white you'd think she is Casper the ducking ghost. I paid and left. This was a couple years ago. The next story is titled Never Wear Scrubs to an ER. This happened a few years ago when my late father's health was poor and one day I left work early to meet my mom at the emergency room USA with my dad when he needed to be admitted. It's worth noting that I am a veterinary technician, which is basically an animal nurse, and I wear scrubs as my work uniform. I realized my great mistake when I strode purposefully through the side entrance into the crowded waiting room and was immediately mobbed by a crowd of people who were demanding to be seen, complaining about their wait time or more disturbingly needed immediate medical attention but were left to wait, apparently they leave people sitting there bleeding in the waiting room, WTF. Before I could even get out the sentence that I wasn't a nurse, one particularly pushy woman shoved an elderly woman in a wheelchair, her mom I guess, at me and said she needed help using the bathroom and she wasn't going to do my job for me, and just walked off. Apparently we were standing by the bathroom, because another woman walked out of it and handed me her urine sample. I told her I wasn't a nurse but she didn't seem to hear me. The poor woman in the wheelchair did, and she started laughing. She apologized, but she was very sweet and seemed really frail and weak, so I offered to help her anyway. I helped with my elderly father a lot so I knew the drill. She basically just needed assistance getting in and out of the chair without falling. Eventually I made my way to the desk and found an actual nurse to hand off my patient to and the cup of urine. After that I kept a change of clothes in the car. I learned my lesson. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.